Welcome back to the 2022 United States Women's Disc Golf Championships presented by Innova Champion Discs. This is round three coverage, and we are pleased to be your hosts. My name is Paige Pierce. And I'm Kona Panis. This is the largest women's event in history. So remember, make this the most viewed women's coverage of all time. Also remember that now through Monday, any and every single order placed at jomezpro.com, a portion of those proceeds will be donated directly to various women's disc golf initiatives. Yeah, so check out the accessories like bag patches, enamel pins, stickers, sweet stickers, wall posters, golf umbrellas, and more. Shop jomezpro.com and join us in supporting women's disc golf. All right, let's get into our competitors. First up, we have our leader, Maria Oliva, from Rowlett, Texas. She is at 20 under par and 100% scramble rate and 92% of her circle one putts hit. After round two, this was her first major lead card of her career. Next up, we have Evelina Salonen coming from Finland, mostly known for her drives, but we've seen her bang a lot of putts and that is why we are seeing her in second place. Next up, we have Haley King, a Wisconsin native. She is 17 under par and she's second in greens and regulation at 89%. She is an all around great thrower and putter. And last on the card, we have Own Scoggin sitting in fourth place. She is sitting first 67% from circle two putting. Insane. We know Own to bang putts, but she's playing great golf all around. And according to the stats, that's where she's getting most of her strokes gained was in circle two. All right, so getting right into it. Hole one, this is a par three, 257 feet, although this one does play significantly uphill, so it's gonna be about a 290 foot shot to get it up towards the pin. There is no OB at all at Elver Park, so you won't hear us speak of that at all. Oliva with her Hawkeye. So funny little fact, Maria walked up to the tee today, ready to play, didn't even get announced, just stepped on up to the tee and threw, which Our I think is just hilarious. Evelina Salonen. <laughs> and they're all laughing about it. Salonen now trying to compose herself before trying to get her destroyer closer than Oliva's who left herself about 25 feet short. And that's drifting a little bit left, but she's past the basket. She's gonna have a little bit of a downhill putt for her too. Our competitor was Miss Maria Oliva. All right, our third competitor for our FPL lead card, we have Haley King. My name is Haley King. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I've been playing disc golf since I was 11 years old. So at the 2018 Ledgestone, I took 11th or 12th and I cashed and I looked at it and I looked at the field and I was like, Paige Pierce is here. All these women that I've seen on YouTube are all here playing and I somehow am right in the mix with them. I turned pro the next year, I believe. I might have even taken cash at that event and I just knew that I'm here and I'm gonna be here for a long time. Growing up in Wisconsin, has a lot of advantages. I've played, in my opinion, a lot harder golf, you know, with the trees and everything. And I've played this course before. It's probably one of the most courses I've played in the Madison area. It feels really cool to return back, be a professional, and have a chance at winning a major title. The reason why I haven't been playing as many events this year is because, honestly, I was not doing good at all mentally. For the last three or four years, I didn't feel supported to be out here. I wasn't getting the help that I needed to be out here, and it didn't feel like the people that were supporting me actually had my back. Ever since I switched to Innova, I told them everything that I need as a player, as a young player. They said, we're gonna do whatever you need to do. If you wanna play one event this year, play one event. Ever since then, they were just behind my back, and that allowed me to move to Charlotte with my siblings. My siblings, honestly, they're too good. They listen to me every single time. Every time I call, they'll be there to answer and they just allow me to express my emotion and then they try to help me find a way around the problem. And then I have to thank my best friend, Brant Weber. He lives in Charlotte, basically moved there for him. Um, 
That man is everything to me and my family. He has changed my whole mental perspective on everything. He's just helped me with the mental aspect and I couldn't be more thankful for that. Before, there was no reason for me to be here and now it's like, I don't want to leave. I've been able to tell that there's an actual change in my mental health and my physical health because I'm seeing it every day. I'm experiencing something new. I can think more clearly on the disc golf course and all this stuff. So this year, my main goal was to play less events just to make sure that I'm actually there mentally because I don't want to get burnt out. I love disc golf. My greatest fear is getting burnt out from disc golf. I've been making it a point to just force myself to take a break so then I can rejuvenate and just be ready for the next event. Wow, and what a beautiful spotlight on Haley, seeing some emotion from her. And that's also going into like why we've seen her, I think, be so happy on the course. She's taking every day one at a time, and it's great to see it. Yeah. And like she said, she's not coming out unless she feels it, and that's great to see. And our final competitor for our FPO lead card, Own Scoggins. Scoggins, on the other hand, I don't think she's ever had a tough time at all in her life. I'd like to ask her that question. It's pretty rare you don't see a smile on her face. And she might have a big smile on her face if she bangs that putt for birdie to start the round. Yeah, all of our competitors on this lead card are on the green looking for that birdie. Oliva farthest away, about 50 feet actually, and does not convert. Haley off the tee turned it over a little bit right. She's going to have to fight through some cabbage. Ooh, beautiful angle on that release. She got it up high with that Anheuser. She let it float down a tiny bit low. Scoggins, uncharacteristic, I think, from that putt. It was a little bit too much hyzer and chained out on the left side there. Her putts are usually a lot more flat and nose up, and so that one kind of came out a little bit different. And I'm actually surprised to see all pars here, Kona. Yeah, it's a very reachable hole as long as you throw something pretty glidey. I could see, I mean, we had Evelina throw a big monster destroyer shot, but as long as you get up the hill, you should have a putt. So I'm surprised our lead card didn't get the birdie here on hole one. Mostly just the surprises because of how well they've been playing up to this point. I mean, Haley King has been on the lead card all three rounds now. Pull two, par four, 432 feet at Elver Park. We have either a forehand approach to get to this tall grass, but then this approach is tough. It is straight uphill. There is a grabby Velcro tree right in the way. So the approach to the basket's pretty tough. You wanna miss that, give yourself a putt for the birdie three. I love this flyover right here. This is exactly how I wish I could see the hole when you're playing it. Maria going for the huge Anheuser shot. The backhand is a little difficult because the slope of the hill goes so far left, so your discs tend to filter down, so she had to get over on the Anheuser for it to fly straight and not come out. And I think she did that beautifully. So much Anheuser out of her hand. Salonen, on the other hand, goes sidearm, and we'll get to see the difference of these two plays. Salonen is closer to the pin, but her disc didn't travel as far, so that guardian bush is going to be more in her way. Haley opting for the forehand as well with her Star, De Star Destroyer. I like this shot just because... Oh my because, gosh. Wow. Huge like, distance. Huge distance. It's not filtering left. It is rolling left, but that's oh. going to give her a straight look at the basket. Scoggins now with her Colossus. You will see her relying on this heavily for sidearms. She doesn't get enough height under it, but she can still get that birdie three. Can she execute now? And this is with her super overstable Star Destroyer. She, she makes the gap. She makes the gap. It has a little bit too much speed on it. It goes to about 18 feet long up the hill. So that is going to be a tester looking down at the basket, but for Scoggins, that should be no problem. Oh, 
and Evelina getting a little bit of an unfortunate roll away, but she should still be inside the circle for her putt. Oliva with her tour series AVR3. AVR X3, it's a very overstable putter. Just about pin high, right outside the bullseye. And what a beautiful stroke from Solonen. Uphill, straddle putt, committed, beautiful birdie. King now looking for her disc, looking for a line. This is such an unconventional stance here. Straddle, bent down. Honestly, surprised how much spin and rotation she got on that disc. Unfortunately, she missed a little to the right there, and she will have to settle for a par. Own hitting that corner pocket to get her birdie. And that wasn't an easy putt. I know we know Own to make a lot of putts, but that was straight downhill. So if she missed, it was going. And especially seeing all of them missing that opportunity on hole one, that moving day nerves, especially being on Jomez Pro coverage at a major championship, looking for that final round lead card spot. Awesome to see a couple birdies here on hole two to get their round going. Moving into hole three, this is a par three, 294 feet. We are almost all the way up the hill, but we still have a little bit to climb. So this hole does play a little bit longer. It's probably plays around 315 or so. The real challenge is making sure you keep it out left enough. Otherwise, you are gonna challenge the guardian trees on the right that sit at about 60 feet short of the basket. Which is exactly what we're seeing from Maria, but she did fight through. She's gonna have a circle's edge putt. Yeah, that was a fortunate kick forward. Solonen with a TL3. This is a super neutral fairway driver and it's just gliding towards the basket. And she's well inside that gap. And honestly, I hadn't seen anybody up until this point go deep in the basket. And that was with a, with a fairway driver. Mm -hmm. Own turning that one over a little bit. She might have been scared of the slope maybe ending right and coming out, but she should have an approach, if not a big jump putt. King now with her Firebird. Hitting at circle's edge, skipping to 20 feet. Such a different game than Scoggins, right? And it's so amazing to see how closely their scores are at this point. I mean, a Colossus is a 14 speed. I know, it's crazy. And then Haley just steps up and throws a Firebird. Oliva also finding that corner pocket. She is going to jump up to 22 under par and walk over to hole four at two under for the round. Mm. Unfortunate miss from Solonen. She needs to get those birdies to try and keep up with Oliva. Yeah, I think that tree was just enough in her way to make her have an awkward stance. King, on the other hand, makes easy work out of that birdie and will jump up to 18 under par. Solonen with a nice connection on that par putt. That was not easy, especially in that tall grass. Kona, I'm curious, what is your opinion? Is this course harder or easier? Do you think we're going to see hotter scores today than we have in the past two rounds at Vallarta Ast? I think we're going to see, we're not going to see as low as scores. We're playing with more trees, there's le more elevation and angle changes. I feel like token was a lot different. So we have hole four, par three, 318 feet. There's several different routes on this hole. We might see our players with a huge over the top stall shot. Uh, but we do have some forehand players, so I could see exactly this shot, the forehand around the tree, skipping right to the basket. Yeah, and even with that gap there, it still allows for you to go low skippy sidearm, high sidearm, over the top like Oliva shows us with her Hawkeye. This is fading out a little too quick, just a tiny bit too much nose up. 
but she's at about 70 feet, stress-free par, and she can run it if she's feeling spicy. <laughs> Haley, on the other hand, got the nose down, put it on some Anheuser, let it miss a few spectators real quick, and she's gonna have a circle two putt. Yeah, that's what you wanna see. You want it to come out of the gap on Anheuser because of how high you're having to throw it so quickly. Oh, Evelina going for the lower gap. I'm kind of surprised, to be completely honest, um, that she didn't go for the forehand if she was gonna go low. Yeah, she is known to have a great sidearm. She must just not have been feeling it on this shot. But we'll own see. was. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm curious to see if Evelina makes that adjustment going into round four. Oh, Oliva with almost enough power to get that chain height, but she'll have to settle for a par. Solonen putting it high and not quite getting the distance. I loved the commitment up high, giving it the height. Goggins, kind of the same same miss there. She must not have been thinking about the cats and dogs on that one. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No. Check out the practice round <laughs> if you want to know about that little inside she joke. She needs to cha channel that energy. King, I like seeing the smile after the miss there. I mean, you do not want to miss. You never want to miss, especially when competing for a major. But she, that smile kind of tells me she knows what she did wrong. She's ready to correct on it, and we have a long round ahead if Haley's feeling that confident. So we'll card a bunch of pars here on the lead card on hole four. I'm excited to see how they attack hole five. I think we're gonna see some great drives, to be completely honest. I would hope so, Kona. Hole five is a 354 foot par three, dead straight, but the bush we're th flying over right now makes it a little bit blind unless you're on the far left side of the tee pad. Players have the option to go flex sidearm down the left side of the gap, which will not bring any bush into play. Or if you wanna go backhand over that bush, you have to throw your shot a little bit nose up, which will take some speed off your disc. Maria getting on this one. That was a lot of Anheuser. Oh my gosh. Wow, it looked like it was gonna keep drifting right and then all of a sudden it came out left. Yeah, that's the stability of the destroyer there for her. I mean, or, was that a Hawkeye? Was that her pink and green disc? I mean, either way, it's even more impressive if it was the Hawkeye, but that came out so high. And on a 354 foot shot, she pretty much threw that with enough power to make it go 400 feet. Crazy. It Amazing. just shows how much power Maria has. And Haley left herself left, but that's the miss that you want on this hole. Evelina's going dead straight line drive, and she's going to blast past the basket, <laughs> leaving her with kind of a tough, low ceiling putt but with this tree. That is such an unfortunate place to be when you commit to a shot so well like Salonen just did and still leave yourself a 30-footer long. I hope for her that she cashes that in and makes good for that beautiful drive she just threw. Oh, and a long birdie bid from Owen, just a tad low, but online. King from distance just off the top, and there are no flags on these Innova disc catchers, so she will skip to about 16 feet. Nevelina not quite getting the spin on that one. Straddle's tough to get the spin sometimes. Oliva with the beautiful birdie to go three under through the first five holes and extend her lead to three shots. You know, if she has a clean round and sprinkles in a birdie here and there, it's really going to be hard to catch her. Yep. As long as she keeps it clean in the fairway, hits her lines, I could see it. Solon and tapping out for her par. 
Same with own as we move on to a more birdieable whole six. Hole six, par three, 279 feet. This has some sneaky elevation that you don't think about while you're on the tee. You wanna aim at these three right trees on the left side, similar to hole three, have something drift right towards the basket. I think the sucker's shot is turning it over too quick because there's bushes on the right side, anywhere on the left side, even if you go too far, too short, to left, you have a putt, but that right side, you don't. Luckily, even though Maria hits the tree, she is still going to be able to have an attempt for birdie. Haley going with a putter, an invader, and getting to circle's edge. And a clear look at that. Solonen with her Mako 3. Oh, a little bit too turned out of her hand. Can it get through the bush? No, it's in the bush. And that, although it is inside circle one, is almost an impossible putt. I hope she proves me wrong. Own with her trusty Colossus. And this is looking good. Great okay. shot. Even though hitting those guardian trees. And that's what you're going to see here at Elver Park. There's a lot more fairway trees. So we're going to see players going to that straddle putt more often today. We're going to see tree kicks late in the flight. And, you know, that's kind of the name of the game out here. Haley making it look effortless, carding another birdie for the round. She's going to be two down so far. She's stoked. Goggins a little high out of her hand, but it sticks. Trying She's, to make that correction from the last few holes, hitting yeah, low. She was low on the last few. Now let's see her even that out and get dead center chains like we're used to seeing. So King, even with that huge putt for birdie, she had to hit that to not lose a stroke to Oliva. Yeah, Oliva going four down for the round, looking incredibly clean, focused ready to take down this major championship. Hole seven, this is a par three, 231 feet, one of the shortest holes on the course. This is dead straight for about 165 feet to the tree that the squirrels are running past right <laughs> now. Then you're going to want a soft fading hyzer into this green and this is one of the tightest greens that we see there's about 15 trees that you are probably going to have to putt around and uh kind of hard to focus when you have a random person running in your fairway did you see that page i did see that and i'm hoping she didn't but i have no other thought than it had to have been yeah because we haven't seen Mer oliva hit first available yet this whole tournament and own putting it right inside circle one. Oh, I love this shot. The angle, the speed, the release, everything. King is right at bullseye's edge. And honestly, in a position to even take two strokes if Oliva cannot make a clean approach here. And it's crazy seeing the disc selections on this hole because Haley oh. just, ooh, Evelina almost acing it. Uh, Haley throwing an invader, a very straight neutral putter, and then Evelina stepping up and throwing a came in a very overstable mid-range. Oliva gets through the gap clean and gets the skip. Minimal damage for her. Pars are fine. Yes, your closest competitors are all looking like birdies. But if you keep that scorecard clean, you don't have any red on there, the birdies will come. Yeah, Oliva is keeping her scramble percentage at 100%. Solonen barely getting over the edge, but she's going to cash her birdie. Maria saving her par. She's going to keep her three-stroke lead.
One of the values of this is that these AM women in young women, like, you know, people in intermediate or in the age protected division can come out and know that they're playing the same tournament as Paige Pierce, as Katrina Allen, like, as those top players on tour. And I think that being able to see yourself in that position is really important. Feel connected to, you know, the stars of a sport or feel like you can be that person at some point, I think is really important. On to hole eight, this is actually the longest hole on the course and it's all about placement off the tee. You wanna throw a max distance drive, but you do wanna end left to open up the approach to the basket. We have a 25 foot downhill elevation shot to this pin, so be careful on your distance control. And I wanna see some threes on this hole page. Yeah, it is a par four, so a three is a bonus, but four is probably the more common shot, although these ladies are on lead card for a reason. We want to see them get as far left as possible if they want that backhand line in. Own, she's a great sidearm thrower, so even though she didn't filter off to the left, she should be able to manage from there. And the King crushing on her Star Destroyer, getting past that bush that a lot of throws end up in if you don't quite get the distance or put too much hyzer. She's gonna have an open look towards the pin. Solonen looking very similar to King's shot. Spicy, that is a bomb. And I think that's gonna be in perfect position to approach the screen. Yeah, from that far left, you're going to be able to see the basket and it looks more like dead straight shot. You're not having to hyzer, you're not having to anhyzer. Maria a little bit more right than they are, but not enough to make that big of a difference. Here's that forehand you were talking about with own. Can she skip down to the basket? Oh, what a shot. She doesn't quite get past. Oh my gosh, spoke too soon. She didn't get past that bush in the air, but that beautiful little roll got her just far enough right where she has an open look at the basket from about 45 feet. Oliva opting for that Anheuser approach. This is looking like it's going past the basket, but she should have a circle's edge putt for her 33. Yeah, Haley, use that bush now. <laughs> Honestly, one of the best tools we could have as professionals, taking the guessing out of the game. King. I think this is that max that she threw yes. at Token. And that is one of my favorite things to see when you use the bush now and then you park the shot. That, yes, it's a promotion for the Bushnell, right? But more so, it's a testament to how well the player knows each of the distances on their discs. She's range found it. Range found it? I think she that's found it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and then she puts it into the bullseye. Like, that is such a testament to how well she knows her shots. Yeah, beautiful distance control. Yes, and this is what I'm talking about, Paige. Oliva carding the first birdie on this lead card. Look at that scorecard too. Par, birdie, birdie. Par, birdie, birdie. Par, birdie. We gotta assume hole nine's gonna be a birdie as well. Mm -hmm. Keep that trend going. Solonen, she's tracking right behind Oliva. Keeping the pressure on. And King with an easy birdie here. She maintains the pace with Oliva, although she started behind. Those three birdies in the last three holes will help in her pursuit to chase down the leader. And three out of four players got the birdie on this hole, and this was the second most difficult hole on the course. Only 7% was below par. Amazing to see those shots. Hole nine, this is also a par four, playing downhill and filters to the right. If you throw it too far straight, you are going to be in that bush line, so you want to make sure to get that turnover. Or if you're throwing sidearm, make sure you do not throw it farther than about 300 feet before it starts to filter out to the right. King opting for that forehand you speak of with her Star Destroyer, kind of getting over on it. Yeah, and honestly, a little bit too much turn for what I think this hole calls for. She didn't need that much distance. She really just needed glide. 
see if Solomon can correct the shot, and this is looking like a pump. Oh, don't hit that. Oh my gosh, that could have been an opportunity for Eagle if it doesn't clip that tree, but should be a very, very manageable 33. Oh no, and Oliva trying to throw the Anheuser shot and putting it too high, leaving it nose up, and she's going to have to see if she can scramble to save her par. Yeah, and you know, unlike Vallarta asked, this course, when you get off the fairway, sometimes there are gaps you can get out of clean, so we'll just have to see if she has an opening from there. And what a crush from Owen, missing that tree that we saw Solonen hit, and she's going to have a long bid for her eagle. Which is her sweet spot, and that is where she's gaining strokes so far in this tournament, is in circle two. King looking to minimize the damage. She's going to have a circle two putt to save her, or to go for a birdie. Okay, she gave herself a look for birdie. If anything, she'll end with par, but man, like you said, we need birdies to attack this course to get Oliva. But Oliva is also in the woods. Can she get herself there a little short? So we're going to have a putt off, and that's kind of what we anticipated from even before the tournament started. Sit. Solonen almost ringing up the basket with her Toro, a very overstable putter. What? Whoa. I cannot believe this. I need a slow mo. Maybe slow mes, slow mes me, boys. She just didn't <laughs> like the angle. I, I don't know what that was. I don't think I've ever seen Scoggins lay up a putt. Oliva with a beautiful stroke from circle two, hitting headband. She gave it a try, not quite making the putt. King to make up a stroke. Oh, just leaves it a little bit low. That was a beautiful opportunity for her and unfortunately does not convert. And yes. Wow, Solomon feeling the putt, making that. Oh, I'm just so impressed with Solomon in this tournament page. Yeah, you know, she goes three for three. She moves up to 23 under. And we're talking about the King versus Oliva battle, but we are kind of sleeping on Solomon. She's making a charge. And that was very well, that very well could have been an eagle. So this card is heating up bogey-free up until this point. And I'm so excited to see what happens on the back nine Kona. Right now, at this point, the four players on our lead card are in those top spots. But we have Valerie Mondujano, Hannah Blumros, and Katrina Allen all tied for that fifth spot. And we have some hot scores coming up. Some hot scores. We're still playing at Elver. We got to see if these ladies can hit those lines and make those putts. We want to say thank you so much to all of our Patreon supporters, the Founders Club. You all make it happen. Thank you so much for tuning in week after week, tournament after tournament, and supporting the growth of disc golf. And at this event, it's near and dear to our hearts, Kona supporting women's disc golf. Remember the challenge that we have for you guys. Let's try to match the number of views. Let's get this to be the most viewed women's disc golf event in history. We can't wait to see you on the back nine.